What's up guys, Fluxdutch here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a tent. Now, this was requested by one of the members of my server, server and uh, as you can see here, I'm, I've am i recreated this scene and attempts to uh, show him how to make a tent. And I'm going to show you guys all right now. So this was the finished result. Now, obviously this is a little bit different than what we saw in the image, but... <clears throat> Overall, I think it looks pretty good and it does a good job representing the way a tent reacts to light and how that kind of shines through. So let's get started. All right, to get started, I'm going to create the initial shape. We're going to use a capsule because it gives us a good basis to start with. Turn on my shading lines. I'm going to drop down the rotation segments to four. Give us a simple four sided tent. You can do more if you want, but that's what I did. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and drop the cap segments to like five. So we're basically just going to be taking this shape right here. So now I'm going to hit C on my keyboard to make that editable. I'm going to then rotate my axis 45 degrees to get this all lined up right. So here axis editing, then rotate this negative 45 get off my axis editing and now I'm going to rotate the whole thing 45 degrees or back to zero there we go so now this is at a 90 degree angle all the way around it's going uh, lining up with the the main axis so let's hit this uh, the polygon edit selection click back on our capsule and now I'm going to hit U and L to select rings, and I'm going to select all of these. Actually, I'm going to select this one, hold shift, click, and select all of the ones that we want. So now that I have all those, I'm going to go to select, invert, selection, and delete. So now we have our basic tent shape, but as you see, we have a giant hole in the bottom. And if we're going to be staying consistent with our image, we don't want to, we want the light to, you know, be coming through the bottom of the tent too, like it actually has a bottom. So I'm going to right click, go to close polygon hole right here. And I'm going to just kind of hover over one of the sides or the corners and click. And that will close that hole. So now we have our real basic tent shape. So from here, I'm going to go to my edge selection tool and we're going to select the actual edges to make the poles of the tent. So go back to a selection tool. I'm going to select each one of these edges. And this is up to you in preference. Obviously I use references on the photo and see if I can pull that up. Yeah, so they have these, uh, the ones going up, arcing, and then the bottom ones, it looks like. So we've got all the outside ones selected. All right, so now that we've got all those selected, we're just gonna go up to here, mesh, commands, and then edge to spline. And what this does is it it does exactly that. It creates, takes the edges you selected and it creates a spline out of it. So now we have a spline and you can't see it. If we turn this off, you can see the spline, but we don't need to see it. So I'm going to go here and grab a sweep, make this a child of the sweep. And then I'm going to grab a circle and put the circle in here too. And at first it's going to look real weird because the circle's too big. So we're going to change the scale of this circle to like 0.5. Okay, so now you can see we have kind of this uh, skeleton shape of the tent, but that's still pretty dense. We don't need it to be that big, so we're going to do like 0 0.1. Too little, so 0.25 maybe. All right, that looks, that looks better. So now we have our tent and we have our supports for the tent. Um, it's not just going to be perfectly shaped outward like this. So we're gonna indent it a little to make it look better. So we're gonna grab our uh, polygon edit tool and we're gonna hold shift and select this side 
We're gonna go to inner extrude and we're gonna bring this in, let's say, let's do like, I don't know, three. And then we're gonna do the same with this side. Inner extrude, apply. Same thing on all four sides. You don't really have to worry about the bottom because it's not going to be seen, but we still wanted it there for lighting purposes. <clears throat> so now we're going to go back and we're going to select all, oops, hold shift, and select all of these inner pieces that we just made. All right, and then we're going to uh, scale this inward just a little bit, kind of give it that look. Like it's kind of sagging and being forced into the uh, the skeleton, the framing. That's probably good. <clears throat> now, here's a part where if you want to create doors or anything, you can. But I didn't need it since it was the back side of the tent. It wasn't a big deal. Um, but as you notice, I did have some stuff inside, but I will sh go over that here in a second. So now we're just going to drop this into a hypernerve or a subdivision surface. And actually, I think I actually I didn't make the frame yet, so I'll show you to do it again. But now we have this uh, hypernerves and. This is where we're going to go ahead and make the outer line. So if you grab, uh, we're going to select both of these and we're going to connect objects and delete. Now we have way more surface to work with. We're going to go back to our edge tool and they should primarily be selected already, but I'm going to unselect this with the loop tool. Same with this, holding control. Now we have our skeleton lines. We're going to go ahead and go to tool or sorry, mesh commands and edge to spline. Again, we're going to grab our sweep, our circle, circle a child, and then the subdivision below that. Change the circle to 0.2. <clears throat> now I've got our framing. And we're going to go ahead and make a couple more of those. So I'm going to duplicate this sweep. This is going to be outside frame. I'm going to go ahead and rename this tent. And <clears throat> this one is going to be inner frame. So for the inner frame, we're going to delete this one. And then we're going to go to tent edges again with our loop selection tool. We're going to grab one about here. Hold shift and select somewhere midway to a little lower. Like right here is probably good. Once again, mesh commands edge to spline. Throw that spline in this uh, sweep. And once again, we have our frame. But this time, we're going to make this a bit smaller. That way, it's inside the tent. So you're going to just scale it down till it's just to where you can't see it. So it's basically hovering on the inside of this tent. It's going to create our inner frame. So now we've got all that. Let's go ahead and model the sleeves that the frame runs in to hold onto the tent. So let's see. Grab your tent, go to your polygon selection, turn off the top outside frame and we're going to go ahead and grab our loop we're going to want to grab this all of these sides <clears throat> and actually 
Let's scale this back up a second so we can see where it's at. And the reason we're doing that is so we can see where to sleeve this properly. So tent, polygon selection. So I'm going to unselect these two, holding control. I'm going to unselect these two. Same for each side. Actually, we can just do this. Holding control and holding control. So now we're going to extrude this. Let's do the top two. There we go. And even the bottom. Loop tool again. And then we'll just unselect all of this. Great. Now we're going to right click, extrude, put our turn our frame back on. We're going to just extrude this outward till it's just over our frame like that. And then we're going to drag the inner frame back in, make it a little smaller. All right. <clears throat> so now what we've got is what looks like a tent. So the most important part now is the material. So let's get started on that. I'm going to open my live viewer. I'm going to change just the path tracing. Drag this down here. I'm going to add a landscape to kind of get this ground going. I'm going to make, raise the plateau all the way up. Scale the whole thing down a bit and bring it to the bottom of the tent. That's good. There we go. So now we're going to add a Guy, just to set this scene up a little bit or a daylight. Make it real early morning. Change the north offset a little bit. Yeah, like that. All right. So first thing we're going to do is create a new Cinema 4D octane material. Double click on that, make a, make it specular. In your roughness, uh, you're going to change this to a one. And we'll apply this here so you can see what we're doing as we do it. <clears throat> so this is the reason we use a specular is because if you think about a tent and the material it's made out of, it's some kind of like vinyl or plastic or whatever it is, but it's, it's see-through, but not so see-through that you can actually, you know, look right through it like glass. But it will disperse color and light will shine through it. So we need this roughness to be on here. That way it's not just like glass. And then we'll add a medium, which is the most important part. So you want to add a scattering medium. And you want to go into the density and change it to around 18.6. This will make it less dense, so any light will come through it easier. Um, same with the volume step. And there's a whole write-up on an Octane site. I, I can link it in my uh, description. But this will basically um, explain what all of these different parameters do. But as you can already see, you can see the inside bars that we made coming through the, the say, plastic of the tent. So those are on the inside, and you can see through it. But you can't see all the way through the tent, which is what we're looking for. So next thing we're going to do is go to our index. And while we want this reflective, 
for it to you know reflect a little bit of light we still want it to be kind of matte so i'm going to turn the index down to one and it'll start giving these nice solid edges and then let's go ahead and change the color so whenever you're using a medium or a specular material it's best to use the transmission to change color <clears throat> so we're going to make this kind of an, a red orange Dude, it's a little dark. 0.05, 0.55. Okay, so this looks red right now. And that's because we don't have anything showing through it. But as you can already tell, on the thinner sections, like where the the tint is uh, holding on to the, the bars, it's very, very light. You can see through it. So this is what the tent would look like, say at night, when there's, or when there's no light on. But we want to add a light to it, so I'm going to add a sphere, drag it up a little bit, and scale it way, way down so it fits just inside the tent. Now we're going to create a new material, octane material. We're going to add an emission black body, and we're going to apply this to the sphere. So as you can tell, we're getting this really, really nice glow coming from the tent, like there's a light on in it. And you can kind of drag this sphere down wherever you need it, and turn up the power. I'm going to go into my render settings and change this down to like 30, 1500, and looks like most of my settings are how I normally have them. Just make sure your um, GI clamp's low. Turn my post off. But there's the m most of the tint. I'm gonna go ahead and make this inner frame a little bit smaller. I'm gonna drag it up. I'm going to actually move this up so it scales a little better. There we go. So you can bring this up, make it a little brighter. And this will change. You can go back into um, your scattering medium here to really dial in how you want this. Then we can add some color to the poles. Glossy black. And as you can see, part of this, the beauty of the scattering medium is that if you look at the ground, it's reflecting orange light onto the ground, which is what it would do in real life. Um, I think if you go to direct lighting, yeah, it doesn't do that, <clears throat> which is why you have to have path tracing on. It's just more realistic. It's filtering the light in as an orange, and it's putting it onto the ground. So now if you want to add a texture, you can go in here. And since you already have the color and everything, you don't want a diffuse um, image for, well, you can't on this, but well, we're going to add a normal and a bump. So I'm going to grab an image texture, hold control, and put this on both of these, and bump. There we go. I'm going to grab my height for the bump, and my normal. 
and I'm going to include these in the description so you can have them. This is looking kind of weird right now, but I'm going to change this projection to, let's do spherical. No, let's try cylindrical. Yeah, that looks a little better. I'm going to dial this down to like 75%. Maybe even 50. Yeah, so that way we have some like wrinkles and divots and even a, a texture on this. So it's not just, you know, a flat material, but it looks more like a tent. I just think this looks really nice overall. So that's it for texturing a tent um, and making a tent, but if you want to stick around, I will go ahead and do the landscape real quick. So I'm going to go create new shader, Cinema 4D Octane. I'm going to make this, leave it a diffuse. I'm gonna grab, go to my materials folder. I have a sandstone texture I want to bring in, kind of a deserty mountainous feel. And you can do anything you want on this, it's up to you. Just drag these to their corresponding channels. And then I'm going to duplicate the bump and add a displacement. And just a Gaussian three. Make this 0.5. Oops. And now I'm going to apply this here. Go ahead and change it to cubic. And maybe even drop it down a little bit. Now that we have some displacement on this, I think this might be a little too big. I'm still gonna drop it down to like 60. Yeah, that's better. Now I'm gonna grab a plane. Drop it down to where just some holes are showing where there might be some water. See, it just rained. Some of these little channels are filled up with water. Create new material. And we're going to make this um, just a specular. I'm going to change the transmission to make it a little like murky, dirty water. Oops. Kind of a brownish color.
apply it to the plane. And now we've got this dirty, murky water. Okay, and then in World Creator, I've made a few height maps, and I will send put those in the description too. I'm looking for them. So let's grab the color map, the normal map, and our displacement. This displacement's 4K. I'll change this to 0.5. I'm going to bring this up to like 1,000 because it's my scene's pretty large. And we want scale to be pretty accurate. Oop. Smooth normal three. And we're going to create another plane. So this plane, we're going to make like 10,000 by 10,000. So right now this plane is taking up my scene entirely. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. Oops. Position it where I want it. And turn it just a little bit. So now we've kind of got this cliff that we're on overlooking the side of a mountain. <clears throat> and if we go to our daylight, click on the tag, we go to the ground and we adjust this so it starts lower, we get a nice faded sun sky. So it's, it's really nice and colored. I want this to be a little less green over here. So I'm going to add a color corrector. So color correction, drag it onto the diffuse channel in the node editor. And I'm going to turn this brightness down a bit. Make it look a little darker. There we go. So I'm going to bring our sun back into play right there. And I'm going to click my polygon edit tool. I'm going to grab my landscape, hit C, 
grab my selection tool, make it a little bigger by holding control and middle button. And I'm gonna just kind of like make some selections in here. And this is gonna, gonna be where vegetation is growing. So I'm gonna hit uh, Shift and C and type set vertex weight. Hit enter. And anywhere selected, I want to be 100%. So basically, it's anything in red, it's not going to be, um, vegetation won't be there. Anywhere that's yellow, there will be vegetation there. And this vertex map can be used in coordination with uh, the octane scatter. So we're going to grab octane scatter. We're going to change our distribution to surface. Click the landscape as our surface. And then um, grab our vertex map right here. And we're going to just highlight the vertex map we just created. So now if we grab some flora drag it into the octane scatter oops I didn't pick the right surface want the landscape there we go make these choose something like some wild grass make it smaller and if we up this you're going to see that it's only kind of growing around the areas that I've selected so put a little grass in there duplicate this change it to say some of this promise change the amount we want very little change the seed it's not bad duplicate it again select a different type like some kind of flower. I think I use this detander. Yeah. Let me bring the scale up on that a little bit. Make sure to use a different seed and maybe have a few less, so like 50. As you can see, we're already getting the scene set up and it looks pretty nice. So next I had a couple trees in here. <clears throat> I'm gonna just select do this one and have some close holding control and dragging, letting go with the mouse. Have some far, like they're on this hillside, basically is what we're doing here. We can fake perspective a little by making this a little bit smaller going into the tree size and 
turning it up or down. Duplicating that. And you can add a variety of different trees, but I'm just going to do this one so it doesn't bog my computer down so much. And you can tell you can't really see them, but we're going to fix that here in a second. I might have actually made those trees too far, I'm not sure. We'll have to see. So if we go into our Cinema 4D settings, and you can see my computer's already bogging down. I'm gonna change this to uh, Octane Render. I'm gonna go over to Render Passes, Enable, Change this to, or leave it, sorry, RGB, tone mapped. We'll just leave it linear. Um, change this to none. Make a save. Uh, let's say passes. Then we're going to go into our info passes. Change this up to like whatever, just a little bit higher. Turn on Z depth. That's what we're looking for. So now we have the Z channel and we can kind of get a good idea of where everything is. And we can see that one of our trees is completely hidden. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that one. Maybe it's just too low. Yeah, it's way, way back there. So we want these trees to be closer. That way they're not masked into the environment on accident. So you can tell they're closer by how dark they are. Sorry guys, I got to this part in the recording while I was editing it and I realized that my uh, recording software had froze. Um, I didn't know this obviously while I was doing it because I was still talking and recording the rest of the tutorial. So all the stuff regarding um, my the, like the fog and the god rays I do have another video on that, but that stuff got cut off in this video. So I'm going to just skip ahead to um, the end where I show you how to do things with the Z-Depth. Uh, sorry about that. We're, now that that is done rendering, um, which for me, I'm actually just, I'm not going to wait the time to render it. I'm just going to use the images from my real render. I'm going to show you how I uh, created the depth in the background, which is where these mountains are. And we're going to do that in After Effects. So you want to have your Z depth pass and your standard beauty pass. So this is the beauty pass, what it looks like. Um, you can't tell that there's two mountains there, that there, it doesn't even look like there's a lot of distance between here and the mountain necessarily. And then we're going to have our Z depth. So I'm going to drag my Z depth to the bottom. What I'm going to do is create a new layer. And this is going to be a solid. So this is going to act as another layer of fog. We want it to be kind of bright, maybe orange or pink or red, you know, kind of similar to the sky. I'm going to have a very light uh, orangish yellow hue. And like I said, it needs to be light. It needs to be lighter than the mountain and darker than the sky or, or even lighter than the sky. 
So here's that. Then we're going to go to our effects and add a gradient wipe. This gradient wipe is going to be dragged straight onto the solid. And we're going to change the gradient layer to the Z depth map. And this is going to basically map uh, the white and black colors to distance or depth. So we're going to turn the transition softness all the way up. And we're going to bring this uh, completion up until we get kind of a fade across the mountains. Now you can do this how you want. Um, you can add it more like this or like this, but I thought just having that subtle glow to the background mountain to kind of make like look make it look like it was further back is what really does it for me. And what the tr transition softness does is it makes this a hard or soft transition. So as you can tell, it's a more of a hard transition there. But as I turn this up, it kind of softens it out. But I like it to be all the way up and drop this down. And I think that gives it a better sense of realism and distance. So yeah, that's all for me guys. This is Fluxed and that tutorial was how to model a tint and the texture for it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask or you can always join my Discord server. I'm usually on this and answering questions except when I'm at work, but I will try my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching.